Welcome to FRC Media News for Thursday, June 18th, 2020. I'm Keith Tebow. This week, we get some updates from Fall River Mayor Paul Coogan. The Fall River Fire Department remembers those who gave the ultimate sacrifice while in the line of duty. As school wraps up this week, what options are there for children as we head into the summer? We give you some options. And the United Way is looking for people to give something back during its week of action. All this is coming up. We're in week two of phase two of the Massachusetts reopening, and we got an update on how things are going in Fall River this morning from Mayor Paul Coogan. He says the reopening of Government Center continues to go smoothly, and local restaurants are offering service outdoors, making sure everyone is safe. A lot of our restaurants are up and running with outdoor dining now. Um, we went out to eat the other night, my wife and I felt like we were doing something wrong. I mean, it's that different because nobody's been out in so long, but they are up and running and uh, we're, doing, we're doing some things to assist them to try to get it going. I'm hearing next week you may see some um, additional things opening on Monday, but uh, it's not official yet, so we'll see how it plays out. But I would say there's been no major glitches at this point. Glenn Hathaway, our, our building inspector, um, is recommending that because he doesn't want to to see a bunch of people sitting at a table get hit by a car, which could happen if there wasn't the proper security up. Um, I know we talked to some people and granted them some flexibility, but when they're in a parking lot or they're on a city street, he's kind of being insistent on some kind of a immovable barrier so that if a car goes out of, out of control, um, it's safety for the people dying. With school ending this week, the mayor said the city learned much about remote and online learning and is looking ahead at what the fall may look like. I think I think what we've learned is we have to be ready to be flexible. Um, that whole nightmare of online learning, distance learning, was dumped into kids' laps that are in grades one to five. Um, high school kids are pretty adaptable at that age, but we did that across the board in our elementary schools, and that's extremely difficult. Um, for example, if you go to uh, Fonzica when they're doing the lunch program, they have boxes there with grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five with learning packets in it, and the kids bring back the work they've done and they get a new packet. Um, it's extremely trying. Um, teachers are really pounding away at that computer all day, and um, I'm hoping going forward that we have a plan developed. Uh, there is definitely some positive things we're looking at, like standardized lessons that are delivered online as opposed to online learning, an actual lesson. Um, and I know we're looking at ways to reform it. We're also trying to make sure we get as many kids' Chromebooks as we can so if that something happens, God forbid, whether there's a second wave or anything, we're ready to go. So We also asked the mayor about a meeting he held last week with local residents on how Fall River can be a more inclusive city in the aftermath of local protests following the death of George Floyd. I thought it was it was really much better than I ever thought because they all wanted to talk. They wanted to make sure that they had something to say that was positive. And it was very it was a very, very positive experience. I was so proud of a lot of the old kids I had at Durfee that spoke up and um and they had an opinion. The next one um, we're working on right now is where we're going to try to bring in um, some of the minority officers off of the Fall River PD and let them talk about their experience in the city of Fall River with racism, with no racism, how they were treated, what's it like working here, what are the residents like. We want them to give a first-hand experience of, of their, uh, their role in the city of Fall River as police officers. These are the kind of conversations that have to be done out front like that so people can um, can hear what's going on. The mayor confirmed that there will be no 4th of July fireworks or other holiday celebrations this year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. He also reiterated to residents the need to remain respectful and adhering to the city's noise ordinance. Um, a, a fireworks goes off sideways into an apartment somewhere the noise for people trying to sleep, for our elderly, for our young people. We want them sleeping at night. Um, I understand that around the 4th of July, but it's going on all the time now. When we really ask our citizens to uh, help us police this, uh, I have had a conversation with the uh, chief about it. Um, for example, the other night they went down to a, a tot lot in Flint and a bunch of kids were letting out fireworks and all the police did was take them and they didn't know why they were taking them. They didn't even understand it was illegal to be shooting them off in a park in the city. And I think 
if parents and if uh, role models throughout the community impress on people that this is not safe, uh, as soon as a building goes up in flames because of fireworks or someone gets hurt, we're going to have a whole different discussion going in this, con in this uh, community. And uh, anything you do to help us, we really appreciate it. No one supports that. Fourth of July, okay, we may do a wink on that one day, but this is every night. Governor Charlie Baker this week filed legislation that he feels will bring about police reform across the Commonwealth. The bill, an act to improve police officers' standards and accountability and to improve training, would create the first statewide certification system for police officers and allow for suspension or decertification if officers commit acts of misconduct. The Fall River Fire Department last weekend held its annual recognition of those members who gave the ultimate sacrifice, losing their lives while in the line of duty. Fire Chief John Lynch says this year's commemoration is a little different from years past, but the meaning is still the same. Most firefighters have many celebrations, many memorials. We all know about the 9-11 memorial. But Firefighter Memorial Sunday is in my mind the most sacred, the most revered memorial that we have. Because not only does it memorialize our fallen brothers, but it also honors them. We have different times before us. Normally we'd be gathered here, maybe 100 people. We would have politicians, the mayor would be here, and most of our firefighters. We have different times, and we've all faced the challenges of it. We've all adapted and overcome. These times have affected us all. We have new terms, COVID-19, crisis. We have civil unrest. These are trying times for us. And we always know that the living are affected by this. But many of us also know that this crisis has also affected the departed. So many people have lost their loved ones in the last few months and not had the ceremonies of a wake or a proper funeral. So it's also the departed that are suffering in these times. We've learned new words during this crisis. Social distancing, mask, the new normal, N95 mask, surgical mask, gowns, testing. But there's certain words that will never go away, especially on Memorial Sunday. That's honor, respect, sacrifice. So today we are gathered in a small number because like everything the fire department does, we face crisis and we learn how to adapt and overcome it. The ceremony included the reading of the names of those who died while on duty, followed by the ringing of a fire bell. William C. Buckley. Robert T. Mitchell. Arthur C. Lovenberry. Edward W. Shaw. James F. McCabe. Michael P. Malarkey, Edward J. Reaney, James E. Eastwood, John P. Clifford, Walter J. Petruska, Francis J. Candeus, John Kozier, Ernest J. Duby Sr. Paul R. Bernard, Gerald W. Nadeau, Albert E. Melanson, Paul F. Chippendale, Robert E. Cavallo, John Pacheco, Jr., John J. Sylvia, Dennis E. Matthew, 
and Adam C. Franco. We'll have more FRC Media News right after this. Here are some job descriptions on the latest hot jobs list from the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center. Sonar Technician, Innovative Defense Technologies, located at 99 South Main Street, has an immediate need for a full-time ARCI Sonar Technician to provide expertise and technical support in the testing and operation of the sonar system for the U.S. Department of Defense. Job number 136-60931. Community Lifeguard. The Dolbin Company has an immediate need for a full-time community lifeguard to sign in residents and monitor the swimming pool at an apartment complex in the Fall River area. Job number 136-61025. Sixth grade math science teacher. Atlantis Charter School, located at 991 Jefferson Street, is in need of a full-time sixth grade math science teacher to develop students' academic and interpersonal skills through academic courses of study implementing a math and science curriculum. Job number 136-60345. Supply New England, located at 186 Plymouth Avenue, is in need of the following full and part-time positions. Delivery driver, job number 136-58031. Warehouse Specialist Backup Driver, job number 136-58028. The Fall River Public School Department, located at 417 Rock Street, also has an immediate need for these following full and part-time positions. A paraprofessional, job number 136-60215. Special Education Teacher, job number 136-60434. For more information on these or other positions, visit Mass Hire Job Quest at jobquest.dcs.ol.mass.gov or call the Mass Hire Fall River Career Center at 508-730-5000. Welcome back. School is out for summer and parents are looking for options for their children in the age of COVID-19. Phase 2 reopening includes the resumption of summer camps. The Fall River YMCA will move forward with its summer camps under restrictions. Executive Director Stephanie Mancini says despite the pandemic, the camps remain popular with parents. We're going to do the best we can. We're going to make it the, the best we possibly can under these circumstances. So typically, the, in, for the past three summers, I should say, the Fall River YMCA has transported about, on average, 150 children to our Swansea campus on a sharp slot road in Swansea. And um, we've ba basically had an outdoor kind of a traditional camp. They have um, baseball fields and archery and uh, hockey rink and all kinds of outdoor activities. So we've been fortunate to do that. Um, unfortunately this year due to transportation, we will not be transporting kids. Um, we are going to be operating here at the Fall River location in our beautiful facility, um, but we will be operating at lesser capacity. So we will have less than half the kids that we normally have. Right now it's set for 70 um, and we are actually full. However, I do just, I, I do, since I mentioned Swansea and certainly our other branches of our YMCA South Coast, there there is still availability left. So um, I don't, although we're full right now, um, you know, if people are looking for care, they can certainly go to ymcasc.org and, um, and reach out. Um, because I know that we're going to be looking to fulfill those camps. All camps at the Y will open on Monday, June 29th, with the Fall River Camp limited to its facility on North Main Street. We do have that a small area in our back parking lot that we, that was a fenced in area that we do use. We will definitely use that. We are looking into taking walks, um, but we, we do have an incredible facility at the Y. Um, you know this, but in 2015, we renovated and our Education Achievement Center was born on the fourth floor. And uh, there's all kinds of different things for the kids to do. Our, we have a new program director, excuse me, camp director, Janelle Henry, um, and she has already set her curriculum for the summer. Um, and I think we're going to have some fun educational components to that too, but we'll also be able to hopefully swim and have that, um, you know, have a fun time swimming and 
we're just going to have to get creative with the the playtime activities. Uh, we do intend on using our basketball court. It's not going to look the same as you know passing the same basketball around, <laughs> and you know we, we we have to have individual um, toys. We have to have individual um, arts and crafts supplies. And, and Mancini says that the staff at the Y are making sure that the camps conform to all state safety measures. What can you expect? What can you expect? The new normal. I know everybody's saying that, and it's getting old already. But um, but but what they can expect from the time they enter and drop their child off until the end of the day. Um, we know it's going to be challenging keeping masks on kids. We know it's going to be challenging social distancing kids. Um, but we are going to put activities in place where it will, you know, hopefully facilitate that versus you know just conjugating kids together in a in a in a in a crazy group. Summer will also move ahead at Greater Fall River Recreation. Now in the past, the organization has hosted a summer kickoff inviting hundreds of local children at an event at Ruggles Park. Unfortunately, with COVID-19, this year's kickoff will be virtual. Program director Anne-Marie Holly says families will be able to take advantage of a number of activities online on the Recreation Facebook page this Saturday at 11 a.m. We obviously can't gather that many people all in one space, but we still wanted to do something that everybody in the community could feel connected, um, whether they be in their own homes watching it, um, you know, or outside in their yards watching it on a phone. Uh, we asked a lot of the normal vendors that do things with us at the kickoff to summer to submit videos. So we have, you know, Casey's fun faces. Uh, she'll be coming in as a costume character and teaching the kids how to make slime. Um, we have Marsha Picard from Partners for a Healthier Community that normally does the big, huge bubbles at the park as part of um, the activities. She's going to be teaching them how to make them at home. Um, we have a magic show with Dr. Finnegan's Circus that's going to teach the kids how to use things around the house and do magic with them, some sleight of hand. Um, we have our caricature uh, artist who's teaching the kids how to draw different things. So a lot of the hands-on activities that we've done in the park are still kind of able to happen in homes with just things that they can find around the house anyway. So mm -hmm. um, we thought that if it's, you know, not entertainment, it's like getting people moving. We have a fitness fun section with a mother daughter trainer team that's going to get them up and moving. So, um, you know, we're just bringing our normal vendors back together to put put something out there that everybody can do together in their own home. Returning this summer will be Recreation's daily food distribution program for city youth. Executive Director Grace Gerling says with the pandemic, the program will be of the grab and go variety. We will be at 13 sites uh, throughout the city from 1130 to 130. Uh, and we will be giving out uh, breakfast and lunch each day. Uh, parents can actually pick up the meals. Um, a child does not have to pick up the meal. The meals are typically for 18 years and younger, uh, but um, per the Department of Elementary and Secondary uh, Education program, we have been given a waiver that parents can come up and pick up those meals on a daily basis. So every day, Monday through Friday, we will be at 13 different sites throughout the city um, give, giving these meals out to uh, families in need. Girling says the pandemic has limited the number of summer activities traditionally offered to children, but there will still be options for kids to stay active. We definitely won't be able to do our uh, basketball program, and we typically have had a dance program uh, here on site. Um, but um, luckily, we're able to provide uh, our sailing program, and we're actually working with the uh, Community Tennis Association to start the t a tennis program at Feather Dick, uh, which we have run for a few years now. Uh, and I believe we're looking for uh, to start July 6th and running it through August 5th, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And we're going to have two sessions of groups of 10, um, making sure that every, our, every child is safe, um, making sure that everything is sanitized.
and you know, um, keeping that social distancing. Um, and as far as our sailing, uh, we're shooting to start that up on June 29th and running it for eight weeks on uh, their two week sessions from 1230 to 430. We're just kind of ironing out some of the, the details, making sure all the kids are going to be safe while uh, participating in the program. Many of us have become emotionally drained as we continue to deal with the pandemic combined with the social strife that's facing our nation. The United Way of Greater Fall River is looking to change our attitudes around. Executive Director Kim Smith says beginning Monday, the United Way will encourage people to perform a random act of kindness as part of its week of action. Traditionally, June 20th is the day of action for United Ways across the, the, the country. Um, but unfortunately, in, in these times, um, gathering people together to participate in a collective effort is a little bit difficult. So uh, we came up with the idea of doing a week of action where folks can get out in within their own respective communities or their families or their, their workspaces to um, take part in their own sort of um, action effort, if you will. And, and that could be um, anything from doing a local neighborhood cleanup to painting inspirational rocks and leaving them along a path to weeding your neighbor's garden. Um, really kind of anything goes, um, as long as it's done with the best of intent in helping those in need. And um, we we tried to make it fun. We're, we're posting things on our Facebook page uh, and all of our social media and um, providing some fun little prizes for folks who send us a pic of them uh, taking part in the week of action. I mean, gee whiz, as if, COVID-19 wasn't enough for us. All the unrest that's happening across the mm -hmm. country, um, it just reminds us that, you know, lead with the heart, lead with kindness, and good things happen from that. We'll have more right after this. Thank you for considering a homeless pet today. I hope you enjoy what you're about to see. And as always, please feel free to contact the shelter before coming down to make sure that the pets you're viewing are still available for adoption. We can be reached at 508-677-9154. Welcome to Hot Dogs and Cool Cats. Today we have Sheba. Sheba is laying right here on our cute little frog blanket. Uh, Sheba is a German Shepherd. She's about seven years old. Um, she came in with her sister Winter. Um, the two of them are a bonded pair, so we would very much like to send them to a forever home together. Um, Winter is Sheba's sister. She is a Shepherd mix. We're not really sure what she's a mix with, um, but she is very sweet. She's about six years old, still has lots of energy, um, loves to go for walks. Um, Winter loves to be with her sister. As we've said before, they are a bonded pair. Um, so if you're looking for two sweet gals who will like to go for moderate walks with you and then relax around the house, these might just be the, the girls for you. Today we have Philip. Philip here, as you can see, he's a short, domestic short hair, black and white, and a very handsome young man. Uh, he's four years old right now, so not too, too young, but not certainly not old. Now, we do know that he was living uh, with one other cat uh, uh, previously, um, so he, and, and he's here in uh, our communal room living with other cats, so he is good with them. He'd probably do well with dogs, as long as they were um, not too rambunctious with them, that sort of thing. He, he would be good with, uh, good with kids, as you can tell he's very gentle just all around a, a very nice mellow uh, and loving uh, uh, adult cat so if you'd like to meet Philip you can come down to 300 Linwood Street in Fall River Massachusetts at Forever Paws Animal Shelter our dinner time with concert series has been extremely popular and will continue tomorrow night with a performance by Chuck Williams you can watch the concert on channel 95 as well as our Facebook page Friday at 6 p.m. That'll do it for this edition of FRC Media News. Please join us on our website, frmedia.org, as we provide you the latest information on COVID-19, as well as other happenings across the city of Fall River. This program airs Thursdays at 6 p.m. and Fridays at 5.30 p.m. For all of us here at FRC Media News, I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Thursday.